There is a good chance that if you're watching this video, you could live forever. But the real question is, would you want to? I've always been fascinated with the idea of living forever. For me, it's advancing technology so that we can explore the universe and uncover all of its mysteries or create and explore fully virtual worlds that just aren't bound by the limitations of real life. I remember as a teen getting obsessed with Sword Art Online and how they use full dive VR to experience what it would be like to actually be in the game, which to me sounded incredible. Minus the part where if they die in the game, then they die in real life, of course, but I would spend hours researching that technology only to find that it would be decades away. But we all have different passions and dreams that drive us. Maybe you want to explore all the different cultures or perhaps you want to delve into the history of life on earth. I'm interested to hear, what kind of passions and dreams do you have? Let's talk about it in the comment section, but whatever they are, Every day we get closer to achieving them. However, there is one factor that limits all of us. Time. We live for a finite amount of time and are limited by our capacity to process and interact with the world. This means that especially with all the daily responsibilities we have, there's only so much that can actually be achieved within the limited time that we have. However, there's a good chance that that is all about to change. Today, we're going to take a look at five different paths we could take to increase our longevity. We'll begin with more natural methods and gradually move towards more advanced technological approaches. As we talk about each path, I really want you to consider just how far you would go to achieve a longer, healthier, and potentially immortal life. Now, while the idea of living forever has always appealed to me, there are many people I speak to that just say they wouldn't really want to. You know, whether it's due to boredom, not wanting to grow old while their loved ones die, or simply the idea that death is actually what brings value to life. Now, all of these are completely valid, but there's a few things I want to cover before we proceed. So, there are a few concepts I'll be referencing throughout the video. First of all, the difference between immortality and invincibility. And secondly, the distinction between lifespan and healthspan, and how they relate to longevity. Generally speaking, biological immortality means you can't die from aging or natural causes, but you can still be killed by external factors. Whereas invincibility tends to mean you're immune to physical harm from accidents, weapons, or natural disasters. However, you can still age and die biologically. When I talk about lifespan, I'll be referring to the duration of your life, whereas healthspan refers to the quality of health and overall well-being during your lifespan. After all, it would be a shame to live till 300 but be withering away on life support by 120. So when I talk about longevity, I'm referring to a combination of both lifespan and healthspan. Now, there's one more very important concept you should be aware of. Longevity escape velocity. This is basically the idea that through advancements in technology, for every year that you're alive, more than one year is gonna be added onto your life expectancy. If you were born back in the 1900s, you're expected to live until about 45 years old, but fast forward to today, and that's about 80. At the moment, we're getting about four months for every year that we're alive. However, due to how exponentials work, this actually increases over time. I'm almost 25, so even if this increase only remained at four months per year, which is very unlikely, then my real life expectancy is actually closer to about 107. But many researchers in the field of longevity, such as Aubrey de Grey and Ray Kurzweil, say we could reach LEV by 2045. And what you'll see in this video will help you understand why. All right, so now that those are out of the way, let's take a look at the five paths we're taking to increase our longevity. And don't forget to think about which ones you resonate with the most. Before we dive into the more advanced technologies, let's take a look at the foundations of longevity, our lifestyle choices. Now, while these natural methods won't get us to immortality, they are crucial for maximizing both our lifespan and our health span. The key principle is simple, everything in moderation. First of all, we have stress management. Instead of avoiding all stress, which many believe is ideal, we really need a balanced amount. Think of stress as exercise for your mind. Too little leaves you weak, but too much breaks you down. The sweet spot in between is where the most growth happens. Not only could this help you avoid going through a midlife crisis later on in life, but it could also lead to more overall fulfillment. Secondly, there's physical optimization. Your body needs a few things in balance. Appropriate muscle mass for functionality, a healthy body fat percentage, as well as regular physical activity. Again, too much or too little of these can decrease longevity. Currently, an alarming 70% of Americans are overweight. But it isn't just fat that we need to worry about, it's having too much muscle can cause strain in your organs and requires unsustainable caloric intake. Of course, too little fat or muscle will cause similar issues. So again, it's about maintaining a balance. Thirdly, appropriate rest and recovery. Sleep is when your body performs critical maintenance. It helps repair your body, instill acquired knowledge, and regulate stress. Without good quality rest, even perfect nutrition and exercise becomes far less effective. Ultimately, moderation is key in every area of life. Make sure you maintain a good amount of muscle, regulate your weight, 
get a good amount of sleep, and also manage your stress levels. A real world example of someone who is pushing the limits of how we can achieve greater longevity through more natural methods is Brian Johnson. He gets a healthy amount of sleep, food, exercise, and ensures a moderate amount of stress. His biomarkers point to him being the healthiest human on the planet, so it's proof that consistent moderation of these natural methods definitely has a strong beneficial impact on longevity. However, and this is crucial, even perfect implementation of all these natural methods won't get you to immortality. For that, we need to get even more advanced. So how about we take a look at the technologies that aim to either slow, halt, or reverse aging. Now, technically speaking, aging isn't actually what kills us. You don't die of old age. You die of conditions that arise as you age. So our goal is to find what causes those conditions and prevent them. One of the main contributors to this are senescent cells, which is when a cell reaches a point where it can't divide anymore. And rather than dying, they begin to accumulate in the tissues and organs, releasing phenotypes that can lead to inflammation and disease. Normally, our bodies are able to clear them, but as we age, our bodies become less efficient at doing this. So you might be wondering, how do we get rid of these? Well, senolytics are compounds that target and remove them from our body, helping to prevent them from building up. You can think of this as removing weeds from a garden to let the healthy plants thrive. Though it's important that these compounds don't also target the healthy cells. But if we dive even deeper, we find that one of the main reasons they even enter this phase to begin with is due to the telomere shortening. The telomere is a protective cap on the ends of our chromosomes that protects our genetic information every time a cell divides. Think of this as the aglet at the end of your shoelace that prevents the shoelace from fraying over time. However, every time a cell divides, the telomeres shorten. This is a natural part of the aging process, but ultimately leads to senescence. There is, however, an enzyme known as telomerase that is capable of rebuilding telomeres. We have experimental therapies that aim to activate this in normal cells, although caution is needed as uncontrolled growth could potentially cause cancer. Though natural methods like moderating stress, diet, and exercise can help to slow down the shortening. Stem cell therapy, tissue engineering, and 3D bioprinting are all advanced methods that we're working on to combat the effects of aging. Stem cells can be thought of as your body's master builders, being able to transform into many different types of cells like bone, muscle, or nerve cells. So when it comes to repairing our bodies, they are extremely versatile. However, the problem is that over time, the population of the stem cells decreases, which prevents our bodies from repairing damage. But here's where it gets interesting. We're learning to deploy fresh stem cells exactly where they're needed, allowing us to already treat conditions like leukemia, where they help to regenerate healthy blood cells. And that's just the beginning. With tissue engineering, we don't stop at individual cells. Imagine taking those stem cells and 3D printing entire organs, which function without fear of your body rejecting them because they're literally made from your own cells. Not only this, but we can go even deeper by editing genes using revolutionary tools like CRISPR. This allows us to edit, add, and remove segments of DNA with high accuracy, essentially giving us control over the blueprint of life. This would allow us to optimize our genes for increased longevity by boosting our body's ability to repair damage, increasing physical strength and endurance, and making our cells resistant to infections. Of course, there are a lot of ethical concerns that come with the ability of effectively giving everyone superpowers. There are concerns over how accessible this technology would be, as well as debates over genetically modifying babies, with the term designer babies being thrown around. There's no doubt that these technologies definitely have the ability to save and improve countless lives, effectively eliminating a lot of modern day causes of death, as you without a doubt change the world forever, for better or for worse. However, they are not alone in their ability to change the world. In fact, it's my belief that this next technology is the one that will help us achieve immortality. Imagine getting a cut, and within a couple of hours, it's completely healed, or having early signs of cancer detected and eliminated before it could cause any problems. This is a future that nanobots could bring, effectively boosting our regenerative abilities by orders of magnitude. In case you aren't aware, nanobots are tiny robots designed to travel around your body and act as little repair workers. And when I say tiny, I mean about 50,000 times smaller than the width of a human hair. So yeah, pretty tiny. The idea is that we'd have a bunch of these traveling around our bodies, monitoring, targeting, repairing, and enhancing biological tissue. They would detect mutated or damaged DNA and fix the errors on the fly. Remember CRISPR's ability to accurately manage your DNA? Think that, but constantly. Oh, and the senescent cells that build up and cause life-threatening problems? Yeah, those are gone as well. I'm sure you get the idea, they're very powerful. However, while all of this sounds absolutely incredible, we're definitely a while off. There are a lot of hurdles to overcome, like ensuring they don't break down inside of our bodies, the question of how to power them, and just actually engineering and manufacturing them proves to be really difficult. 
but that doesn't mean it's impossible. For example, there's research going on about powering them by harvesting bioelectricity, which is the natural energy produced in the body from movement or bodily heat. Although other issues that we'd run into are the more ethical and regulatory considerations. There's the question of if these robots are traveling around our bodies collecting data, then who has access to all of this data? Would the data be stored locally, only accessible by you and your AI companion? And how accessible will this technology actually be? I can imagine it being pretty expensive. So would it be distributed evenly somehow? Honestly, who knows? It's pretty much impossible to predict how a technology that isn't even going to be around for like 20 years is going to develop. But with how powerful this technology is set to be, I'm willing to bet that this is going to be one of our main paths to biological immortality. But tell me, is the prospect of immortality, immunity to most if not all diseases, and fast regenerative powers enough to make you get this technology? Let me know in the comment section down below. Personally, I would love to. Now moving even further into the realm of human and machine symbiosis, we have cybernetic augmentation. These are technological enhancements, such as artificial limbs and neural interfaces, that are integrated into the body in order to improve or even replace biological function. These have the ability to increase both our lifespan and our health span by essentially bypassing the body's natural limitations. Of course, we currently already have more rudimentary versions of this technology. Amputees are able to get artificial limbs that help them regain lost functionalities like walking or grabbing objects. And we even have neural interfaces that allow us to control these artificial limbs. To be fair, nowadays we're already able to control a computer with only our thoughts, with Neuralink proving this to be possible, as well as other approaches like EEGs or electroencephalograms, a much less intrusive technology that have been shown to be capable of similar things. However, this technology is quickly advancing, and before we know it, we're going to be in a world where replacing parts of your body is just a normal thing. Imagine being able to safely replace your heart with a more efficient one that isn't prone to disease or failure and is much more resistant to damage. We could improve our physical capabilities, allowing us to become significantly stronger, more stable, and much more resistant to physical damage or disease. Could you imagine how cool it would be to run at 50 miles an hour while jumping off of a cliff and only sustaining minimal damage? Seems far-fetched, but this kind of technology would make it possible. We could augment our senses, repairing damaged hearing or vision, or even enhancing them to the point where we can hear at different frequencies, have languages translated in real time, or see in different wavelengths, similar to how some animals can. And our brain could be enhanced with neural interfaces that give us immediate access to all the world's information. Right now, we can use AI to help us research or answer any question we might have. But what would it look like when you can just think and get the answer right away, rather than having to pull out a phone or get a computer? Our cognitive abilities would go through the roof. This kind of future feels like science fiction, almost to the point where it's too far-fetched to even believe would work or be possible. But then telling someone 50 years ago that we'd soon be able to have the answer to almost any question within seconds would sound just as far-fetched. Of course, while all of this has the potential to be positively transformative, there are many concerns and questions that pop up. You might have heard about a thought experiment known as the Ship of Theseus, where it questions if you were to replace every part of a ship one by one until none of the original parts remained, will it be the same ship? And if not, at what point did it become a different ship? Now this is an incredible question, and to be honest, it is hard to say. Although it's also known that all the cells in your body change about every 7 to 10 years, excluding the neurons in your cerebral cortex. So that question can already be applied. Are we the same human we were 10 years ago? Again, a very good question. Personally, I feel as though as long as consciousness remains, then the body in which it resides isn't actually that important. However, many religions, cultures, and worldviews would disagree with that. And ultimately, this is a technology that will impact people globally. So these kind of ethical debates are important to have. Not to forget the concern that doing all of this opens us up to being hacked. And while security around all of this will undoubtedly be a top priority, it's also true that it becomes possible. There's also the question of accessibility. You can imagine more advanced augmentations being restricted to people with more wealth, potentially creating another economic disparity. So while this technology does have a lot of potential to evolve the human race, it also comes with a lot of concerns. So again, I'm interested to know, would you replace some of your body, all of your body, or none of your body? Let me know down below. So, now that we've gone over the idea of replacing whole body parts with cybernetic ones, we come to an even more futuristic topic of discussion. Mind uploading. This is the concept of copying or transferring the contents of a human mind, including memories, personality, and consciousness, from a biological brain to a non-biological substrate, such as a computer or another form of hardware like a robot body. 
But for this to even be considered, we would need a detailed understanding of how the brain functions. We would need to be able to map neural connections and understand the dynamics of neural activity. So while we have made a lot of advancements in neuroimaging and computational neuroscience, scaling this to the full complexity of the human brain is an enormous challenge. However, we've already talked about how the majority of the people watching this video are likely to live forever, meaning there's a good chance we'll actually be around to witness this technology. So let's imagine what this future could look like and how it would actually work. There are two paths I want to explore. The first is copying and the second is transferring. Copying involves creating a one-to-one -one digital duplicate of your brain. This would involve perfectly scanning your brain and transferring all of the information over to a digital model. However, this copy would be separate from you. The second it's created, it will begin to have experiences separate from your own and could therefore be perceived as another entity with your memories. A way of thinking about this is imagine you're 50% of the way into a game and decide to make another copy of that game save. Both copy one and copy two are the same, but as you play each of them, you make slightly different choices. And by the time you finish the game, they look very different. This is similar to how copying your mind would work and could be beneficial to serve as a backup of your memory or to create multiple versions of yourself, but you wouldn't be the one transferring over to the digital world. For that, we need to look at the method of transferring. So rather than making a copy, with this you'd be moving your actual conscious experience from your biological brain to another substrate. This would mean that there would be continuity and only one of you would exist. Now, there are a few proposed methods of doing this, like whole brain emulation with shutdown and quantum mind transfer, but the one we're going to be focusing on is known as gradual neural replacement. Recalling the ship Athesius we mentioned earlier, this method would involve gradually replacing your biological neurons one by one with cybernetic equivalent, and over a period of time, eventually 100% of your brain would be artificial. This could potentially be done by nanobots or some other futuristic method. If this were to work, you'd be truly immortal. You'd be able to live life both in the digital world and the physical world, seamlessly transferring your consciousness between the digital world into different robot bodies or even back into your own original body. You see, many people argue that your sense of self comes from the process of your mind, your continuous stream of awareness, memories, and personal narrative. But we change all the time. For example, do you feel like the same person you were 10 years ago? I know personally, I can barely remember 10 years ago, but I know that happened and it's formed me into who I am today. These are all my experiences and my memories and everything like this, like, but your conscious experience changes from moment to moment. That's one reason why aging can be so daunting, as you're gradually getting closer to death, watching your biological body wither away while quite often your mind still feels young. However, just because you may not remember everything about your past and just because every cell in your body has changed from birth, you're still you. So the idea of gradually replacing every neuron in your brain, I feel like this would keep the continuity, similar to how we just go through normal neuroplastic changes every single day. Once your mind is digital, you wouldn't be limited to the constraints of the biological mind and would be able to scale up your processing power indefinitely. You could replay memories or experience virtual worlds. You could travel to other countries instantly by transferring your consciousness over to a substrate in that country. Even if you were to experience some form of digital death through corruption or errors, your life state could be restored. You wouldn't get hungry, you wouldn't need to sleep, and time would be perceived in a completely different way. It would literally change everything. This, to me, is the ultimate goal for longevity. We'd be at a point of true immortality and invincibility. Yes, the world would look very different to how it does today, and even the concept of life would be as well, but personally, I hope that this is the future that we're heading towards. There will undoubtedly be a divide in society between people that want to embrace this technology and those that just want to live more traditionally. And to be honest, that's more than understandable. So yeah, it would definitely be interesting to see how that dynamic plays out, but honestly, every part of me truly does hope that we live to reach that point as I feel like it will be a fascinating era to be in. As always, I'm eager to hear what you guys have to say. After hearing all of this, would you want to live forever? And if so, which path would you want to take? a more natural one where you increase your life by a few years or a few decades or would you want to upload your mind so that you can live in the cloud forever and transfer between bodies or somewhere in between let me know in the comment section down below and if you like this video then i really recommend checking out my other one where i talk about how we're entering a new era of gaming but otherwise until next time thanks for watching